So what I want to discuss now is order of operations, right? Why you probably are familiar with seeing as bed mass, okay? So, I mean, why do we need an order of operations, okay? Now, when I was a kid, maybe like eight years old, uh, you know, in school, people would, would play this game. I don't know if it happened at your school, it happened at mine school, where they would be like, hey, what's two plus two times two, okay? And, you know, a lot of kids would be like, oh, well, two plus two is four, and four times two is eight, and they would say eight, and then they'd be like, no, it's six, ha, 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 you're wrong, right? I don't know if, if that happened at your school, it happened at mine. Right, so the right answer is six, okay? And it is definitely not eight, okay? And the reason it's six is because you have to multiply first, all right? So this actually equals two plus four, right? Two times two is four, right? So two plus four, and that equals six, not eight, right? because eight is two plus two in brackets and then times two, okay? Which is four times two, which again is eight. So if you add first, you get one answer, the eight. But if you multiply first, you get a different answer, six. And that is reason enough for us to agree on an order of operation. Okay, we have to agree on one because if we don't agree on one, we're gonna write down the same thing, right? Two plus two times two, write down the same thing and get two different answers. Okay, the people who add first will get eight and the people who multiply first will get six. And because we have to be able to communicate with each other and record things in a way that we all understand in the same way, we have to agree on an order of operation, okay? So that's the first step. We agree there has to be some order of operation that we all use. But then the next step is, well, what should that order be? Should we agree, should we all agree that we're gonna multiply first? Or maybe we should all agree that we're gonna add first. What does it matter? As long as we all agree on the same order of operations, we'll get the same answer. Well, it's not enough to get the same answer. You also want to get the right answer, right? You want the same answer that you get to be the right answer. And actually, multiplication has to be first. Okay, multiplication has to be before addition. We cannot agree on a system that works the other way around. And that's because of what we saw in the last video where we see that everything is actually addition, okay? And I'll give you the example here, okay? Let's write this out, but not using a multiplication symbol, but using only an addition symbol, because remember, everything is addition. Well, what is two times two? Well, it means you're adding two to itself, how many times? Twice, okay? So, what this means, it actually means this, okay? So if we wanted to rewrite this, it means two plus two plus two. So two plus two plus two is definitely, okay? If we do the addition first, right? So if we do the wrong thing, if we do two plus two first, and then we multiply it by two, well, again, what does that multiplication by two mean? It means that we're adding something to itself, right? In this case, the thing that we're adding to itself is what's underlined in red here, right? So we have two plus two plus two plus two, okay? Let's get rid of the brackets for simplicity. Two plus two plus two plus two, that's eight, okay? That's a different question, okay? 
And how did we specify let's add first and see what we get? That's by using the brackets. Okay. And brackets are not an operation, right? Brackets are just a symbol, which means do this first, or a symbol that means treat this as if it's one item. Okay. And if you imagine the brackets as actually being like the sides of a circle, right? then you imagine that thing is in a bubble. It's like one item, okay? So you have two plus two as like one thing. This is a bubble. This is one object. And we're going to multiply that object by two, okay? Um, well, what is that object? Well, that's a four, okay? That's a four in that bubble, right? Whether you write it as two plus two or whether you write it as a four, it's just the same thing in the bubble. And we're going to multiply it by 2. OK, 4 plus 4 is 8. OK, except, you know, a bubble is a lot to draw, so we're just going to draw the sides of it. 2 plus 2 times 2, well, that's the same as 4 times 2. Now that it's just one thing, you don't really need the bubble around it, right? You could write it like that, right? Uh, you could also write it like this, because another mathematical short form is when you have two sets of brackets just beside each other, it also means multiplication, right? And that means eight. Without that bubble there, if you just have two plus two times two, you have to do the multiplication first, right? Like we saw up here, because when you convert multiplication to the addition that it means, this just means 2 plus 2. Okay, so we have to do the multiplication first. And we have 2 plus 4, which equals 6. Okay, and another reason why it's actually beneficial to write multiplication as two brackets beside each other rather than using an x or a dot is because then it actually looks like something you're supposed to do first, right? 2 plus 2 times 2, well, then closer together. So it actually looks like, oh, I, I should do this first. It makes you think of it as if it's one item, as if it's a 4, okay? So that's another benefit of writing multiplication as, you know, two numbers beside each other with one or both of them in brackets, right? And this is easier to see when we actually use different numbers, okay? So... Let's go 2 plus 3 times 5, okay? If we want to convert this to only being addition, well, we have 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, okay? There's five threes. And that will give you... 17. That's the right answer. You could also write it as 2 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Okay, 5 threes or 3 fives. Either way, you're still getting 17. That's the right answer. You'll notice that's the same as 2 plus 3 times 5, which is 15, right? Which gives you 17, right? Either way, you're doing the multiplication first. Okay, whether you interpret this symbolism as meaning something like this, or meaning something like this, or meaning something like this, this is just three different ways of writing the exact same thing. Sorry, four different ways of writing the exact same thing. Okay, so multiplication has to be first. What happens if you do addition first? Well, let's make use of our brackets. 2 plus 3 times 5. Okay. Well, that's actually 5 times 5. Okay. Which when we break it down into addition, we have 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. Okay, five fives, that's actually 25. Okay, and 25 is not equal to 17. 
And we know 17 is the right answer, right? When we break down multiplication into what it actually means as a form of addition, right? We know 17 is the right answer and 25 is not equal to 17, which means you have to multiply first. You cannot add first, okay? So multiplication has to come before addition, all right? So this is why not only is it important for us to agree on an order of operation, it's also important for us to use the right order of operations, right? We can't all agree on the wrong one. We have to all agree on the right form, right? Now, there's something that we did here, okay, which I didn't actually explain why we can do that. And maybe some of you caught it. And that's this here. Okay, that three times five can be written as five threes added up or three fives added up. And it gets you the same number. Okay, now it's true for this case, right? Five threes added up is 17. And three fives added up is also 17. Okay, and what that tells us is that you can multiply three by five in any order. Whether you think of it as three times five or five times three, it gets you the same answer. Three fives added up, which is the bottom situation, or five threes added up, which is the top situation, it gets you the same answer. But the question is, is that true for everything? Is that true for every combination of numbers? Can any combination of numbers be multiplied in the same order? Right? And it's not enough to be like, yes, because my teacher told me. Right? It's important to see why that's true, because that'll help you understand a more complex subject matter. So let's see what's going on. Right? So before we said everything is addition. Okay, everything can be broken down into addition. If you want to break it down even further, everything is adding one a bunch of times. Anytime you see a three, that's actually one plus one plus one, right? It's one added to itself three times. Anytime you see a five, that's one plus one plus one plus one plus one, right? You're adding one to itself five times. Now, that might look Familiar, okay? If you're adding a number a bunch of times, well, don't we call that multiplication, right? Three times one, isn't that one plus one plus one by the definition of multiplication? Yes, okay? Five times one, isn't that one plus one plus one plus one plus one five times by definition of multiplication? Yes, okay? And that is actually what brings us to another rule that you probably heard. Any number times itself is equal to that very same number, right? Any, or sorry, any number times one is equal to that very same number, okay? And, and that's why, right, by definition, right? That number is one added to itself a number of times equal to that number, right? So when we break down this three and five into a bunch of ones, then we see why three times five must equal five times three. So here's what's going on, okay? Three times five is three plus three plus three plus three plus three, okay? Five of them. Now let's break down these threes. One plus 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 one. You know, all these one plus one plus ones, uh, that's a three, right? Plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, okay? Five of them. Remember, just as an aside, one plus one plus one, that's just another symbol for three. 
Okay, you can have the same thing represented using different symbols. Okay, that's just another symbol for three, one plus one plus. Okay, so we have five of them. I'm just writing the same thing um, in, in a different way. Okay, and now we're going to reorder them. We're going to reorder them because you can add things in any order, right? Or if you remember the example of the weighing scale, right, in, uh, in the previous video, okay, adding is just placing weights onto the scale, okay? It doesn't mean, uh, sorry, it doesn't matter what order you place the weights in, it's going to weigh the same amount in the end, right? It doesn't matter what order you place the weights in. It doesn't matter what order you add in. So instead of adding this one right here, and then adding this one, and then adding this one, and then adding this one, and so on, we're going to add in a different order. We're going to take this one here, and then this one, and then this one, and then this, and then this. We're going to take the first one in every one of these groups of threes, and we're going to add this up first. One plus one plus one, plus one, plus one. We have five of these ones that we're adding up, okay? And the reason we have five of them is because, well, we've got, you know, five groups, right? Because there's five of these, you know, groups of three, because we're doing five threes, okay? And next, we're going to add the second one in each of these groups, okay? And again, there's five of them, right? So one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Okay, and now we're going to add up the ones that are remaining. And again, there's five of them remaining. One plus one plus one plus one plus one. And now we're done. We have no more ones to add up. So what do we have left? Well, we have these three sets of something and what's the something that we have three sets of, again, as an aside, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 5. That's five ones. So what we have is 5 plus 5 plus 5 three times. Okay. So by breaking it down into ones, we see that 3 times 5, which is three fives added up, that's the same thing as 5, uh, sorry, uh, which is five threes added up, right? That's the same thing as three fives added up, okay? So what we've demonstrated here is three times five is the same as five times three, okay? You can multiply three and five in any order. And we showed that without actually calculating what three times five is, right? Nowhere in this process did we say that three times five is 15, okay? Just by rearranging the numbers, knowing that we can add them in any order and that all numbers are just a summation of a bunch of ones, all whole numbers are a summation of a bunch of ones, we know that we can multiply in any order, okay? And we did this with five and three. And, you know, maybe you see now intuitively that this is true for any two numbers, okay? Now, how would you show that it's true for any two numbers? Well, in math, like you saw, we use letters a lot. We use letters a lot to represent numbers. So let's say we have some number A and we multiply that by some number B. Well, what does that mean? It means we have A plus A plus A and so on, right? We're adding a bunch of A's. How many A's are we adding? B of them. And if we want to break that down into this, we have 1 plus 1 dot 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 plus 1 a times plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 dot 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 a times and so on right these are all the a's that we have 
how many A's do we have? We have B of them, right? I'm just writing the same thing, right, in a different way. And now, just like we did with five and three, we're going to add these ones in a different order. So first, we're going to add the leading one in all of these groups. The leading one. How many of those leading ones do we have? Well, we have B of them, right? Because they are B groups. If B is seven, we have seven groups, right? So we're going to have seven of these ones. One plus one plus one and so on. How many of those leading ones do we have? We have B of them. Okay. Now we're going to add the second leading one in all of these groups. Again, there's going to be B of them. One plus one plus one and so on. There's going to be B of them. And then we're going to add the third leading one, right? Which I can draw everywhere here, right? But you know, it's there. The third leading one and so on. And we're going to do that for all of them until we end up with the last one in the row, okay? The last one in the row, all right? And how many of those last ones in the row do we have? Again, we have B of them because we have B groups, okay? So we've got all these different groups of B ones together. If B is seven, we have all these different groups of seven ones together. How many of these groups do we have? Well, we have A of these groups, right? Because the number of groups we have on the bottom row right here is the number ones of ones that we have in every set of A ones, right? If A is five, well, then we have the first set of ones, the second set of ones, the third set of ones, the fourth set of ones, and the fifth set of ones. Okay. And now what you see here in the bottom row, it's just the reversal of what we see in the top row. And if those B ones added up, if we just write that as B, that's just the reversal of what we had up top here. Instead of B A's added up, we now have an A number of B's added up. We started off with A times B, and now we have B times A, right? So you can multiply in any order. So this process here, where we're using letters that can represent any number, and we show that something is true for these letters, well, that means it's true for any set of numbers that these letters can represent. That's called a mathematical proof. Okay, and maybe you've seen this mathematical symbol before, maybe it's a square. Um, that square means we just proved something. That's the mathematical symbol, it's a hieroglyphic symbol, which means we just proved something. Okay, so we just proved that A times B equals B times A. In other words, you can multiply two numbers in any order. Okay, so an example of that is what we did here with 5 times 3, okay? If A is 3 and B is 5, right? So if A is 3 and B is 5, right? A times B can be written as 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. There's five of them, which is the same as one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one dot 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 five times, right? Which is the same as, you know, take the leading one. How many leading ones are there? There's five of them. And so on. And how many times can you do that? Well, you can only do that three times because there's only three ones in a row. And that gives you five plus five plus five. And our three times five has just turned into a five times three or a B times A. Okay. So that's a demonstration of why you can multiply 
two numbers in any order. And that, well, we already used it to talk about order of operations between addition and multiplication. Okay, so we use that to demonstrate um, that, uh, that you have to multiply before you add. Okay, and what we're going to show next is the other parts of bed mass, but I will leave that for the next video.